Right, uh, so I've got the um, wormwell housing you see on top of the popper there. We just stoked that up. We're going to let that uh, warm up so we can start fitting those um, those bearing cups into place. I think I've just got it. If I just get it so that I can't quite touch it, it's probably going to be around about 70 to 80 degrees. Will be comfortable for me. Um, we'll get that off here. Get it over the milling machine where I've got a um, bit of timber set up to try and retain the heat and we'll, uh, we'll drop those cups into place. All right, we're sort of a temperature now. I can't quite touch that with my bare hands. <clears throat> so, let's see how we go. Right. We're all home. We could have gone probably a little bit warmer on that, but let's uh, fit it up well. You might remember that was the standard that we uh, that we machined up a little while ago, and it is hard trying to punch things down when you're on uh, when you're on timber. But that's everything in and seated. So. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll heat up one of the cones and we'll get that set onto the shaft. So, yep, they're all home. That's brilliant. You know, I should have gone a little bit hotter on that. It would have dropped in a lot easier. But anyway, that's, uh, that's worked out really well. All right. There's nothing worse than your fitting cups or big couplings on big shafts and uh, you've had it on the induction heater and uh, halfway on it starts to get stuck and uh, out come the big sledgehammers and all sorts of gear try and uh, to try and get those home so um, yeah it's certainly a, an uncomfortable feeling when that happens when you just don't quite get it hot enough and uh, things just don't quite get on all right We'll, uh, we'll do the same with the um, with the cone. So we'll, we'll bring you back when we're ready for that one. All right, that's on spot on. I actually measured this one this time to uh, make sure we had no issues. So uh, it was about 0.03 clearance on that. So that's comfortable. So that'll shrink in quite nicely. So. That's all our bearings in place. Next thing we'll do is mount this up into the housing. I'll make up some dummy bearings to go in that housing just to check that uh, that worm shaft, and we'll see how the engagement is on this uh, on this worm wheel. So we'll let all that cool down, and uh, I'll get those dummy bearings made up, and then we'll try some uh, assembling. Before I go, we might just try a little bit of um, assembly work now. So. And all its bearings. Yeah. 
So I put the bearing in the right way. Goodness me. What was I thinking? Done up tight, but there's no backlash in there. That feels beautiful. Right. right, I'll machine up some of those little dummy bearings and we'll set them into place, but everything's sort of panning out exactly where it should be. All right, we'll be back then. All right. We've got a little bit of a problem with the uh, Hoin VFD on the lathe. It's uh, it's packed it in. I've, I've certainly got power coming in and going out, so I'm, I am energising, but I have absolutely no control. I've got no display coming up at all. I've, I've got a short somewhere in it. don't know where, and it's pretty much identical to the symptoms I found on the uh, VFD that I had on the, um, on the milling machine, uh, and it packed it up. And that was probably about two or three months ago so uh, I've had this on here for many many years um, same as the milling machine and uh, I sort of packed it in with the, within a couple of uh, a few months of each other so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and buy a, uh, a name brand unit um, from a from a local company well fairly local anyway with a couple of hours away so um, I'm gonna go ahead and order another 2.2 kilowatt VFD this one will be a senseless drive um, it'll have uh, two years uh, warranty on it plus um, over the phone support so we'll uh, we'll send this one on its way with flowers and uh, we'll get it up and going but it's going to be a, a couple of weeks before I do get that new VFD in and, and get that get that up get the programming sorted out on it and get the uh, and get the lathe running again so one of those things anyway so they were good while they lasted these units, but uh, obviously they haven't got a. They do have some issues. Don't have a great deal of longevity with them. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll get the new one on and we'll see how we go. All right, guys. Hey guys, I've got a new toy to play with. I um, ordered a new VFD off uh, eBay through a, a company a company called uh, Conon, which I've I've dealt with before. I've bought motors off uh, Conon before. But uh, first time I bought a VFD, and uh, I'm just doing a, a dry test run on, a, on another motor before I, I get it into the lathe. So I've just gone through all the programming parameters and set those up. Got all my wiring sorted out. I've, um, I've put an external potentiometer for speed control in here. So I've just got that dagged in at the moment. I've also done an extension cable. Uh, so that I can actually mount this unit away from the lathe and then I can make sh mount the panel directly at the lathe. So I want to I want to try and get this away from the lathe. You know, just flying chips and rubbish and debris that, that tends to come off when you're machining. And dust, so I want to keep it away from the lathe. So I'll run that uh, remotely into place and then obviously the same with the, um, with the pot. So that's... Uh, that's the existing pot I've got on there at the moment. This does come with a little potentiometer on it already, but because I use the thing so often, it's just gonna it's just gonna blacken up the uh, up that little panel. So, uh, hence I've uh, I program remotely for a, an external potentiometer. So we might just turn it on. When I get this into the lathe, I'm going to have to. Um, set up my start-stop functions uh, remotely to the panel 
or external to the panel I should say. So, oops. We'll hear a run. You'll probably hear our motor. I've just got this hooked up on the CNC load at the moment. Just taken away. And if I give this potentiometer a bit of a tug, you can see it slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. And so that runs uh, very smoothly. Hasn't got one of those really noisy fans that I've seen on some of the uh, VFDs. They're a bit of a pain. But uh, this one here, the fan will turn off in a moment. I've, I've pre-programmed that so that uh, it only kicks on when it's uh, when it's running. Um, Quality-wise, gosh, compared to the Chinese Hoin units, the uh, the cheap units that I bought, much more solid and probably about, gosh, I'd say twice, nearly twice the size. It's it's quite a big unit, very robust. Certainly, the body, the plastic-wise, that in here I don't like plastic, but the plastics on here is an awful lot uh, a lot thicker than uh, than what was on the other units. I tended to break the lugs off on those, and you get a pretty good. English manual with that, and it's it's quite readable. But like all VFTs, they have their own way of coding and the way of uh, setting the codes or get into the program parameters. So um, you know, you grow up like a standardised that sort of stuff. But uh, anyway, I guess it's all proprietary stuff. So anyway, so I've got this thing running now, all the parameters set. Um, I'll get that set up in the lathe, and I'll take the. Uh, the control away from its uh, its panel and uh, and set it up for external mode and hopefully we should have the lathe back and going again uh, very soon all right so i thought i'd just bring you a little bit of an update with what we're playing with and uh we'll uh we'll get going that that's the little tiny cable that you actually get with it <laughs> so uh yeah all right we'll uh we'll leave it for now and uh I'll try and get this thing mounted up and uh get everything set up uh to the lathe for it. Alright guys, um, I've now got two dead VFDs. These are the uh, Haiwen, the, uh, the Chinese uh, units. It's uh, sold for around $100 to $130. Um, this is the one I had in the lathe, this is the one that just packed it in. So these are packed it in within a few months of each other. I've had them on probably for about, oh gosh, five years I reckon. So. Anyway, we've got the, uh, the new VFD up and finally running. Um, going through the coding on this through the uh, through the manual is uh, a little bit ambiguous with some of the uh, the way the instructions were written. But um, yeah, we've got through it. We've got it up and going. A couple of little faults that we've had to uh, overcome, and um, there were just little programming issues. Once again, the uh, the manual was a little bit ambiguous. On some of those aspects, but um, I've uh, made the little control panel, front panel uh, remote, and uh, that's where it sits. Would have been nice to get a um, as part of this just a plug to go in there. If you do take that out, I've, I've just used some electrical tape just to plug up all the holes. The last thing I want is, is chips coming in and out, uh, or getting in there and uh, and causing some issues. And uh, I've re-established my uh, little potentiometer from a speed control, so um, that's running well. Give you an idea of the size compared to the uh, Haywin units. Get it up there. So it's about half the size. Get down a bit further. It's about half the size of, uh, of the unit that I've put up here. This is a uh, a brand name unit. As I said, I picked this up from a uh, from a supplier in Melbourne. Catalog. It's a uh, who wants to know. It's a fallen driving follow heart winning the future. That's inspiring. So look, we'll flick it on, and we'll show you how we go. I was having some. Um, Issues with tripping out my RCD again, but um, what was happening was that the uh, unit was going into fault um, on deceleration, um, and it's the same thing with the high wind units too. With uh, you need to set them up for a running stop if you're not running a braking resistor. But, um, 
it back charges for the unit somehow and uh, and creates a fault. And when I got that fault, as soon as I turned the machine off, it tripped out the RCD. So there was something strange going on there, but that's uh, that's all sorted now. So we'll flick him on, and up he comes. And we'll give him up. Bring up the 50 hertz. So my emergency stop works. Running in reverse. It's just running off here. So we've got all of our motor controls running from the lathe now. We've got the coolant pump, we've got the jog, and so everything's running off the uh, off the lathe controls now. So I'm happy about that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have any more um, major issues, and I can get back to doing some turning. Anyway, if anything happens with this little unit, I'll. Uh, I'll do a little DV, little video on it and uh, show you what's going on. But um, for now, it's uh, it's up and running and uh, it's performing well. As I said, just got those little little issues we had to sort through with uh, particularly in the programming. Getting into the programming's not too bad. It's uh, a number of buttons you got to push to get around to the functions that you need to get to. But um, yeah, other than that, I, I I picked it up fairly quickly on that one. Alrighty, well. We'll get back to some more making. I'll see you soon, guys. Before I do go, um, a couple of things I'll mention too is that uh, this one does have fan cooling. I have um, run with some VFDs where the fan noise is just absolutely horrific. You can't hear yourself think, and it's constant. There's uh, there's no function there that you can uh, you can turn that fan off. Um, this one here only comes on when it's been powered. In other words, when the lathe is running. So we're in the lathe. The fan's running now. So you can hear it in the background there. And it runs probably for about uh, 10 seconds after um, after the power's been removed. A little bit less actually. So uh, yeah, it's quite neat. I prefer it if the fan didn't come on, but uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll live with it and we'll get used to it. Um, the cost on this unit too, when I purchased it, um, was delivered $265 and it is a senseless unit. What I will do is I'll, I'll put it into high gear which is just greater than one to one. Well, a fair bit greater than one to one. I'll just turn that pot right down. So I'll turn it down to around about two hertz and I'll just over three. Now I've got a fair bit of pressure on that, and that is not stopping. So that's a, uh, a senseless drive, constant torque right down from base speed down to um, close to zero speed, probably down to about one hertz. You'll uh, you'll maintain your constant constant torque. All right, guys, see you soon.